Yeah, I, I've been teasing him for this, but uh, when, a little bit before uh, he came, we were on a call and he said, you know, I don't think I'm gonna buy that much. I don't think I'm gonna buy that many CDs. Uh, and that has not been true thus far. <laughs> I, I foolishly underestimated the selection at uh, Texas and Oklahoma stores. <laughs> Yes, here it is, finally, at long last, the video you guys have been waiting for, my Oklahoma and Texas record store crawl and haul video. This is the one where I tell you about all the great record stores I visited in Oklahoma and Texas during my eight-day vacation. I took a bunch of vlog footage I'm going to show you, show you the insides of the stores, and of course I'm going to break down all the great stuff I got from all the stores. Uh, one little disclaimer before we get started though, just so you know, uh, I was paying way more attention to CDs on this trip than records. I tend to favor CDs over vinyl when visiting a store that's new to me. I'm not sure why, it's just kind of the way I've always been, basically a, a throwback to my, uh, my instinctual attachment to CDs, even though vinyl has become much more a part of my life in the last few Few years. So the stores that I talk about in this video I will be talking about from the perspective of a CD buyer and not so much a vinyl buyer. Uh, another reason I was almost totally in a CD state of mind, cue Billy Joel, was because I was traveling by air and records are harder to pack for air travel so I barely even bothered to look at vinyl. But as it turns out circumstances changed over the course of my trip and I did end up buying a few records. Yes, I bought so much stuff over the course of my trip, as a matter of fact, that I ended up having to ship home not one, but two boxes. Not huge boxes, as you can see in the pictures, you know, were relatively modestly sized. You know, I, I didn't need to, you know, hire a shipping company to give me their wholesale rate or anything, you know. I didn't go really totally crazy, at least not in my opinion, uh, but I did end up buying three records, five cassettes, four DVDs, and over five dozen CDs. Yes, so many CDs, in fact, that I had to tuck a handful of them into my carry-on bag after basically packing to capacity those two uh, mailing boxes. So, yeah. Okay, now, are you ready? Let's get down to business here and go through in painstaking detail my record store crawl and haul. Uh, on our first day in Dallas, my first full day there, we went to Forever Young Records. It's the one I was most looking forward to, having seen the mind-blowing videos on YouTube of the store's size. Enormous store, I'm telling you. And unfortunately, it ended up being the one that I was most disappointed in. I don't know if my expectations were too high or what, but uh, I'll try to explain why. First of all, it was their pricing. Their CDs were in two sections. Their regular used CDs were all $7.98 or higher. There was no bargain section. So that made me pass up at least a half a dozen titles that I wanted, but knew I could get for much less just by shopping around a bit. So if you want to sell more CDs, guys, gotta lower your prices and have a bargain section. Uh, their other CD section consisted of new and out of print used discs. Uh, while their new discs were fairly priced, uh, pretty much retail as far as I could tell, I didn't see a single out of print CD that was below $14.98. The problem with that? That included the super common stuff I've seen for $2 or less at thrift stores or in bargain sections. I mean, we're talking John Cicada's first album on CD, and I'm pretty sure I saw several Celine Dion titles in there. 
And remember, this is used. These are not new. So uh, that starts to give you an idea. Yeah, just because a CD is out of print does not mean it's worth a premium, people. Okay. In fact, very few out of print domestic used CDs justify that price tag. You'd think that a record store owner would know that. So I found it very, very odd. So as you can see, the pricing around the store was extremely inconsistent and uneven. My second issue with the store was the condition of their used CDs. In the 798 section, they had the empty cases in the racks and the discs were behind the counter. So you brought the case up and they would uh, retrieve the disc and put it in the case and let you buy it. And I naively assumed, uh, maybe because of the size of the store, that at those prices the discs would be in good condition. So I didn't vet them before buying. And yes, that turns out that was my mistake. I ended up disappointed in the conditions of most of the CDs that I bought. Uh, not that any of them looked like they wouldn't play. Uh, I'm just a little picky about the blemishes on the CDs that I buy. I like there to be none at all, obviously. Uh, I might have still bought them, but not for $8 in the condition that they were in. So yes, uh, that basically taught me that from now on I need to check the condition of any used CDs that I buy. So what did I come away with from Forever Young Records? Oh, aside from the t-shirt. I decided I might as well showcase the t-shirt from the store as a consolation prize, I guess. Anyway, uh, the among the used CDs that I got was the last Kebmo CD that I was missing from my collection, Blues Americana. Very looking forward to listening to that one a lot. And the special edition, uh, remastered edition of Bon Jovi's self-titled first album. And actually, an interesting side note, Noah had this one on sale uh, in his Discog store, and I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And unfortunately, somebody else beat me to it and bought it, and it was actually at pretty much the same price. So, what the heck. And then, Zach Hexum. This guy is a singer-songwriter. He is the brother, I believe, of Nick Hexum from, is it Sum 41? I can't remember who Nick Hexum is uh, a part of or was a part of. But I had had the CD a long time ago. It fell victim to a space-saving CD purge, so I was glad to pick it up once again, give it another listen to see if uh, it was worth picking up again. And then I found three new CDs, uh, still sealed, uh, All in Good Time by Bare Naked Ladies. I mentioned in my uh, thrift store video that I was uh, looking to recollect the uh, part of Bare Naked Ladies' discography that I'd been missing. So there you go. And then the uh, first album by Fitz and the Tantrums. I really, really enjoy their se sophomore album. Never did give this one a try, and so I decided now is my chance. And then we have... An album by Jack's Mannequin. Uh, Noah turned me on to these guys. Uh, it is uh, um, Andrew McMahon's band uh, before he went solo. And uh, this is his album, People and Things. I, he gave me one of their other CDs, and I, I kind of liked it. And he thinks I might like this one a little bit more. So I decided it was worth uh, springing for. So give that a try and see what I think of it. And I did buy one cassette from Forever Young Records. And I probably should have bought more. Uh, they had at least a couple of Weird Al Yankovic cassettes. And now I'm regretting, uh, just a couple of days after I left the store, I regretted that I didn't pick those up. But yes, The Origin. They, these guys are an American band that I discovered a long time ago. And I'm not going to go into much detail, except I do have this one on CD. But uh, in an upcoming video that I'm going to be doing, it's probably still a month or two away, uh, cassette is how I first discovered these guys. So that's why I bought the cassette, so that I could have uh, the proper prop to show you during the video. So that's really the only reason I bought that. So anyway, so I will admit the size of the store was seriously impressive. I mean, it's the biggest record store in Texas, at least that is their boast. And uh, honestly, I would not have trouble believing that. It is an enormous store, and the amount of their inventory in the store was mind-blowing. Two out of the four perimeter walls of the store were all cassettes. They were not totally full. Some of the racks were empty. There were some empty spaces. But I have not seen so many cassettes in a retail store since the 80s. Seriously. Uh, and am I glad I stopped there? Yes. But I don't see myself going back there anytime soon. Uh, I would probably opt for the Dallas location of Josie Records on my next trip if I had to make a choice. But anyway, I am glad to say that things started looking up after Dallas. Uh, on day two, passing through Oklahoma City, Noah had two stores on his agenda. The first one we visited was called the Trolley Stop Record Shop. And I've got to say, it's probably the one with the most unique vibe, uh, my favorite atmosphere, of any I visited on that entire trip. Uh, it reminded me in a way of an antique shop, or maybe an Old West General store, I guess. Uh, and it's, it's, it was big. It was a big, spacious store, and at the far end of the store there was what looked like a stage, so they probably have some great in-store performances at that place. 
Uh, all the used CDs in the store were $5, except for double disc CDs and new CDs, those were $10. But the vast majority were in excellent condition. Uh, my only complaint was that they had the CD racks scattered over like seven or eight different spots throughout the store, so I had to be extra sure I wasn't missing any. But yes, I did find a handful of pretty good things at that store. I'll show you the two cassettes that I got first. First one is the Jackie Wilson story, a compilation of the great soul singer from the 60s, Jackie Wilson. Uh, only problem with this one is, and it might be a problem, it might not, was I realized after I brought it home that the pressure pad on the cassette uh, was missing. So I don't know how good it's going to sound, but I'll, we'll find out. And then the best of Sha Na Na. These guys were a 50s doo-wop revival group that were popular in the 70s, 70s and into the early 80s. Uh, they had a TV show back on that I remember, vaguely remember watching when I was a kid. So these guys were a lot of fun, and I look forward to revisiting their hits, which I haven't heard in forever. And as for the CDs, uh, first of all, we have the original soundtrack from Annie, the motion picture version from 1982, I think it was. Yes, I am not much for musicals, but this one is a sentimental favorite, favorite of mine. I've enjoyed it since I was a little kid. And I did pick up, you might recall, I think I mentioned it, maybe I didn't in a video, I found the LP on the freebie shelf at House of Records. Uh, unfortunately, one of the tracks skipped, and I do still have it, I think. I didn't get, get rid of it, but now that I'm getting, I've got the CD, I will get rid of the LP. Uh, and yes, a very, very good condition, and it's not an easy CD to come by, at least in terms of on Amazon, or I haven't checked Discogs. I don't know how popular it is on Discogs. Anyway, next up we have the best of Jay and the Americans. This is one of the playlist series, but uh, in a very unfortunate uh, and pretty rare occurrence, they label this one per rather deceivingly. Uh, one night at uh, Noah and Alyssa's house, we decided to put it on and listen to it, and it is recorded live. These are live recordings, not the studio recordings that I was hoping they would be. And I'm kind of disappointed in a big label like Sony, you know, being uh, deceptive like that. So, yes, they, they do that rarely. It's it's those fly-by-night, cheapo indie labels that you have to worry about uh, that do that kind of junk. I don't know if I'm going to keep that one or not, but we'll see. And then uh, I completed the part of my Eurythmics uh, discography that I care about by buying uh, Sweet Dreams as well as... Revenge. So yes, got knocked those two off my list. I don't know, I might expand my discography of theirs at some point, but I wanted four of their albums, and those were the last two that I was missing, so I was really pleased to get those. And uh, Michael Penn, this is his third album, Resigned, or Resigned, I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's Resigned. Uh, yes, I have enjoyed his first album I found in a, or no, second album I found in a bargain bag that made me get his first album a few months ago. Now I've got his third. Apparently, I like him. And then also completing another discography of Simon and Garfunkel. I found their fourth album, third album, their remastered edition with a couple of bonus tracks. So I was very happy to find that. So yeah, some good stuff I came away with from Trolley Stop. Our other stop in Oklahoma City was at Guest Room Records. This was one of the nicest stores I visited. It had a bright but cozy atmosphere. You'd think that would be a contradiction in terms to have it being bright but still cozy, but I think that may have had something to do with the fact that they have a resident cat. Yes, apparently her name is Lil' Kim. That right there, you're just, just the coincidence that my sister's name was Kim. Something about that, I guess it just... just I, I was meant to find that store. And yes, whenever a store has a mascot like that, I am instantly a fan. Uh, she was so friendly and sweet. As you can see, Alyssa had no sooner sat on the floor of the store than Kim hopped into her lap and started making, her, making herself comfy. So yes, adorable cat. Uh, she was very affectionate and very playful. She would, she, I saw her batting around a little uh, fuzzball sort of thing around on the floor of the store at one point. Anyway, uh, aside from little Kim, let's talk about the uh, CDs that I found there. One of my favorite scores from that store is a five-disc set of the complete works of Scott Joplin, and it was eight dollars. And as you can see, uh, all but one of the CDs are still sealed in their cellophane in the wrapping, and the one that was not sealed was in absolutely spotless condition. So essentially a new set of CDs. So yes, I've been looking forward to uh, dipping a little bit more, taking a deep dive into Scott Joplin. So I've only got one compilation CD of his, so yeah, I thought I'd uh, give that one a whirl. And then another multi-disc title I found was Bela Fleck and the Flecktones, their album Little Worlds. I've only ever seen, uh, although not that I've been looking for it for very long, but they have a one-disc uh, distillation of the uh, of songs from it, you know, kind of like an abbreviated version, but this is the full three-disc version, so this was the next studio album in their discography that I'd been missing, so gradually making my way through there. 
And then uh, this other one is this is another one that belongs in the no judgment category. Gerardo with his uh, album a debut album I think Mo Ritmo, and I wanted to check this one out because Weird Al Yankovic. Here's another Weird Al connection on this trip. He did a version of his hit single Rico Suave, which he called Taco Grande. Aside from the fact that Weird Al did a parody of the song, the the rhythms in the song. I mean, look up the song at some point. His uh, Gerardo's version, Rico Suave. It got some interesting rhythms and uh, uh, meters in the lyrics, I thought. Um, you know, I, maybe it's just me, but I just thought it was, it was kind of catchy in a way. And then um, I've decided to do a little bit more exploration of Chris Isaac's discography. So this is his album, Always Got Tonight. And I picked up a couple of Chris Isaac albums on this trip. And then also I wanted to take a deep dive into the Australian rock band Midnight Oil. So I picked up a whopping three of their albums, three consecutive albums, Diesel and Dust, Blue Sky Mining, and Earth and Sun and Moon. Uh, I did have Diesel and Dust, but it was a rather scratched up copy that I had on the freebie shelf. So, yeah, fine. And that one was, uh, well, it was $6, but still, you know, not very bad prices at all for a lot of the stuff on this trip, as you will see going on through this video. Now, if you don't mind for just a moment, I'm going to step outside of the chronological retelling of my travels and talk about thrift stores. Yes, we went to a handful of thrift stores throughout my stay, Noah and Alyssa and I. So as an interlude of sorts, uh, before I get to our dedicated record store crawl day, I thought I'd conflate all of my thrift store purchases here. Uh, yes, we went to a Goodwill store and a uh, Habitat for Humanity restore, which I had no idea some of them actually sell CDs. Go figure, huh? and uh, uh, one or two other local thrift stores as well. So uh, first one was a DVD I actually bought. Uh, it's from the first and second seasons of a series called Episodes. This was on HBO, no, Showtime. And it's an interesting show. I watched a few episodes as it uh, premiered on Showtime. Kind of funny, it stars Matt LeBlanc, as you, can say, as you can see there. And then this first one is Jackson Brown. I have never really checked out Jackson Brown before. I've even never even checked out his album Running on Empty or any of the classics by him. He's an artist that I've always meant to give an, an honest try to at some point. And so I decided for a $1 thrift store score, it's a better, as good a time as any to start, right? And I have no idea where this album ranks in his discography, but we'll find out. And then uh, a possibly questionable one, Al Jolson. Questionable, I say, in that uh, one of the early things he did in his career was he performed in blackface. So, and yes, some of the songs on here, there's one song called My Mammy. So, yes, it's it's an artifact of a rather unpleasant and more ignorant time in our history. So I'm going to give this one a try. It was 25 cents. So uh, he, he was a good singer, as I've heard. So yeah, I'm going to give him a try. See what this is like. I have no idea. I'm not going to count on... Uh, keeping that CD, but for I figure for 25 cents, why not give it a try? And then a soundtrack from 500 Days of Summer. I am a huge Joseph Gordon-Levitt fan. I watched this movie and I really enjoyed it. Uh, and it seems to have a pretty good soundtrack. I don't recall the soundtrack off the top of my head from seeing the movie, but again, for 25 cents. Yes, the Jackson Brown one was the only $1 one at the uh, Goodwill that we went to. And then we have a classic album by Tony Bennett, I Left My Heart in San Francisco. The title track is one of his most, probably his signature song out of his entire career. So yes, I'm looking forward to listening to this one in its original, you know, classic format. I've only ever had uh, compilations or the more recent releases of, you know, like his Lady Gaga duets album and a couple other duets that he's done, Katie Lang and Diana Krall. So I've never checked out a classic album by uh, Tony Bennett. And then this one is going to be very interesting. You guys probably have never heard of this guy, Chuck Wagner. He is, uh, I knew him as an actor from a very cheesy sci-fi show that I watched back in the 80s. It was called Auto Man, and it was basically, it was Tron in reverse, an electronic guy coming into the real world. Very hokey, very cheesy. Uh, the, the technology would not hold up at all to, uh, today. And as I recall, the acting in the show was not all that great. His performance was kind of wooden because he was he was Auto Man. He was the guy that came out of the computer. So his acting was probably meant to be kind of, you know, stiff and, and whatnot. But anyway, a bunch of uh, looks like show tunes off of the, on this album. I had no idea he was a singer. So I don't know. I don't know if this is his only album, if he's done 35 other albums or what. But uh, I figured I've got to give this guy singing a try. He probably has an unexpectedly amazing voice. Who knows? Uh, then his voice might suck. I kind of don't think it will, but we'll find out. And then we have 
Kenny Chesney's Christmas album. Yes, I've gotten into Kenny Chesney uh, recently over the last year or so, so I figured I had to pick up his album. And yeah, now we're getting into, I think, the Goodwill stuff, which was $1.99, dollars something like that uh, each. And then uh, next one, Canadian Brass. I kind of like the Canadian Brass. I've got uh, their holiday album, I believe, and a compilation. And then this one, which is a New Orleans, I believe, inspired album. But one of the things that caught my eye, I actually saw this as I was standing in line at checkout. It features George Siegel on banjo and vocals. And I don't know if this is the George Siegel of the Goldbergs that recently passed away, because I know he was, I, I'm pretty sure he was like a vaudeville um, performer, so I think he was a, uh, musically inclined at some point in his career. So, And the liner notes don't show any pictures or anything, so I don't know if it is that George Siegel or another George Siegel, but it'll be interesting to find out. And then, uh, as I mentioned, Rod Stewart a little bit ago, so I picked up his uh, the first volume in his Great American Songbook series. And as uh, you'll see, there might be more to come. Spoiler alert. And then the last one in my thrift store roundup was Anne Murray, uh, Duets and Legends, or Friends and Legends, excuse me. It's a duets album that uh, I had a long, long time ago, but foolishly gave up. Yes, there's a long list of albums that I regret giving up. And, uh, and oh, I also got two cassettes at uh, the thrift stores. Again, this belongs in the column of No, Jud no Judgment, Please. Jeff Foxworthy, You Might Be a Redneck If... Wow. I think the guy's funny, okay? And yes, any, any uh, comedian that likes to make fun of his own demographic, good-natured fun, is in my book. A uh, 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 must-listen to, maybe, I don't know. And then Roseanne Cash, a uh, Greatest Hits album from her, uh, 1979 to 1989. So I've always wanted to check out Roseanne Cash, so that gives me a good excuse to do that. So there you go. And then we come to the big day, day six, the day of our big Tulsa record store crawl that Noah and I enjoyed. Not surprisingly, it was probably the day I was most looking forward to, I'm not going to lie. And also, it was probably the most fun day of my stay as well. Although I do feel a little bit guilty saying that, because it was one of the few days without Alyssa. That's not the reason it was one of my most favorite days. Honestly, Alyssa, love you. But anyway, we made six stops that day, not counting lunch, which I talked about in my vacay vlog video a few days ago. Our first stop that day was Gardner's Used Books. Now, this may be the store that I was the most impressed with and that took me the most off guard out of all the stores that I visited on my stay. I mean, after all, it's mainly a bookstore, according to its title. Uh, as you can hopefully see in this video, I kind of had to walk through it quickly in order to cover it all. They have not just books and loads of them, but they also have CDs, DVDs and Blu-rays, uh, a handful of records, and a comic section as big as some dedicated comic book stores I've been in. Uh, yes, between the comics and the CDs, 20-year-old me would have been in absolute heaven at the store. Uh, I'm going to be back in Tulsa in probably March for a wedding, and I've already decided that if there's one store I need to get back to while I'm there, this is likely the one.
So let me show you the stuff that I got at Gardeners, and it was quite a bit of stuff. This was one of my biggest purchases of my stay in terms of number of items I got. First of all, uh, continuing my quest for my Better Than Ezra discography completion, their album Closer. Great stuff. It's got a little, little bit more uh, uh, hip-hop elements in it than most of their other albums have. And then I have Blessed Union of Souls' first two albums, so I decided to pick up their third album, Walking Off the Buzz. See how that goes. And then I mentioned in a recent video, I think it was my thrift store video, I was working on uh, going backwards through Bette Midler's discography. And so I got her her next most recent one that I did not have, and that is Some People's Lives. So, And this was uh, on their bargain shelf for two bucks. Yes, most every one of their CDs was uh, four dollars or less. So good stuff at good prices in that store. Then we have Amanda Marshall. Uh, I got her, her first CD was in my sister's collection. I picked up her second CD after that. And this is her third and most recent CD. And this was back in like 2002. So I don't know where she's gone to. If she's uh, just doing indie stuff or if she's just retired from singing or what. I don't know what happened. And then we have The Fray, their self-titled album. Now this one I got at an FYE a couple of years ago. And it is a two disc set. But the one that I got at FYE didn't have the second disc. That right there should have taught me to vet the CDs that I buy, the used CDs I buy, before I actually pay for them. But, you know, sometimes I'm not the quickest on the uptake. Let's just put it that way. But yes, this one does have both discs, and they're in very, very good condition. All the stuff from Gardeners was in excellent condition, I gotta say. And then I was also working on accumulating my All-American Rejects discography. So we've got this one, uh, When the World Comes Down. So, and I also got the their most recent album as well. And then continuing my, oh, another Better Than Ezra, uh, How Does Your Garden Grow? This one actually completed my Better Than Ezra discography. And then the remastered version of Bon Jovi's album, These Days. Uh, I, I'd had the unremastered one, the mastered, I guess is how you, how you put it, earlier on. And so I decided to upgrade to their remastered one. And then continuing on my John Mellencamp uh, exploration, I found two of his CDs. They're the, bonus, the remastered editions. Um, the Lonesome Jubilee and Dance Naked. So, and then I got one cassette and one book at Gardner's. I mean, hey, if it's a bookstore, I might as well get a book, right? The cassette is the album Connected by Stereo MCs. These guys were an electronic, uh, electronic group, uh, EDM type of group, I guess. Uh, I heard the song, the title track Connected on, on some TV show years and years ago. And for some reason it stuck with me. And so I decided for uh, 2 95 give these guys a try. And then the book that I got, I actually, I don't know if I'm going to show any of them to you in this trip, but I picked up two or three Celine Dion CDs in my travels on this trip, and I also found a book. This is in the 33 and a third RPM series. It's a very detailed analysis of particular albums, but this one has a bit of a snarky twist to it, as you can tell from the title. Let's talk about love, a journey to the end of taste. So, uh, yes. I'm expecting uh, the snark to be strong with this one when I read it, so I figured I might as well. If I'm, you know, get grabbing a bunch of Celine Dion CDs, why not uh, check out a, a possibly dissenting point of view on Celine Dion? So there you go. Now, in a sort of contrast to the almost overwhelming size of Gardeners, our next two stops were at smaller stores in the Tulsa area. The first one was Oil Capital Vinyl. This was probably the smallest store we stopped at, but a very, very charming little shop with a very nice owner. They only had maybe 75 total CDs in their inventory, so it didn't take long to browse, and I was really only just looking for one or two specific titles on vinyl anyway. And then after that, we went to a store called Blue Moon Records. Uh, it was probably not any larger than Oil Capital in terms of square footage, but he had more stock in there. Uh, it was cozy, but it wasn't cramped. He actually uh, somehow avoided it from it, making it feel cramped. Uh, there were a good few hundred CDs, I'd say. And again, a very friendly proprietor. He was actually off getting himself some lunch when Noah and I got there, so we had to wait in the car for a few minutes until he came back and reopened. But uh, anyway, I only found one CD from Blue Moon that really begged me to take it home. An album by Al Jarreau in which he uh, covers uh, Great American Songbook standards. I had seen this one, I think it may have been at House of Records. It was a, a new CD, still sealed, and this one is actually new and still sealed as well. But uh, uh, Blue Moon's price of eleven ninety eight was much better than, I believe it was fourteen ninety eight or fifteen ninety eight at House of Records. But yes, as I said, I kept waffling and balking at buying it at House of Records. But this was obviously my chance to pick it up. And then I found a few CDs down at Oil Capital. 
Uh, first one is a Greatest Hits album by The Tokens, a 50s group. Uh, very charming stuff. They did the song uh, The Lion Sleeps Tonight. You've uh, definitely heard of that one, obviously. So yes, uh, that was a, a good one. I'm looking forward to listening to that one. And then a world music compilation from Rhino Records called New Visions. Uh, yes, that was the main reason I bought it was because it was on the Rhino label. They do good quality stuff, good quality compilations. So I figured, hey, why not give it a try? And all of their CDs at Oil Capital were, I believe, $2. So that explains why I was uh, much more willing to buy, you know, stuff on a whim at Oil Capital. And the final purchase from Oil Capital was the Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack. So I figured I've got all of the soundtracks, um, the song-based and orchestral score albums from the original Ghostbusters, as well as the song-based soundtrack from the Ghostbusters revival that happened a couple of years ago. Uh, I don't have the score album from that movie. And actually, I just found out uh, between planning this video and actually filming it that they just, the other day, just this past Friday, released finally, for the first time ever, the orchestral soundtrack from Ghostbusters 2. So I guess I'm going to have to buy that one to make my collection, well, nearly complete, I guess, except for the score from the latest Ghostbusters movie. So, there you go. And we're only about halfway done. <laughs> Told you I wasn't going to buy very many CDs, right? Yeah. We gotta fill up the box, that's why I said. Until the box is full, we can't go home. In my defense, not all this is my stuff. Uh, well, only about... Uh, most of it. percent of it. <laughs> <laughs> Our next stop in Tulsa was at Starship Records and Tapes, and of course I was attracted to this store by its title. I like to think that it was Star Trek inspired, but you know, knowing the fact that it was a record store, it was most likely inspired by the group Jefferson Starship and Jefferson Airplane and so forth. But hey, let me have my fantasy, okay? Anyway, I was curious about this one, not just because of its Star Trek friendly name, but I had heard Noah talk about it before a couple of times. Uh, the last time he mentioned it, which was a while ago, he didn't seem to rave about it very much, so I kind of wasn't really expecting much out of it, but it surprised me. Uh, this actually may be my second favorite store in Tulsa. Uh, there were lots of CDs there, uh, although most of them were in locked cabinets, so you had to get a staff member to fetch a CD that you wanted. And by this time during our record store crawl day, I was also running out of energy and focus, but the good part of that was that I'd already taken care of a good chunk of my want list, so... I didn't scan the cabinets as carefully or as methodically as I normally would have, but I did find a few things that I'd been looking for and didn't see anywhere else, and a few things that I wasn't looking for, and that kind of tends to happen uh, with most of the places that I visit. Uh, anyway, as far as CDs go, uh, I did find the last one I was missing in my All-American Rejects discography, Kids in the Street, as well as Amy Mann's sophomore album, I'm With Stupid, and I can't remember if I mentioned her in a video or not, but her uh, her first album I found in the $2 section at House of Records a couple months ago, and I was impressed with it, so I decided to pick up her sophomore album. I'd been looking for that one for a while. And then this one is yet another CD that I had had long ago and gave up in a space-crunching CD purge. It's by a group called Atomic Tom, with my name, I mean, I'm obviously attracted to it, and uh, the big song on this album was Take Me Out. It was a single that I guess had a very popular or viral YouTube video, which I never saw. I just, I don't know how I happened upon these guys. Maybe it was used at uh, Skips at one point. Is that, that's how I came across it, maybe. But I en enjoyed this album, and so hopefully I will enjoy it again. We'll realize that I was stupid giving it up. So anyway, uh, those were the CDs. Yeah, just three CDs was all I found there. I did, uh, although, find a couple of DVDs or Blu-rays. First one is a live performance of Annie Lennox's album Nostalgia. I'd, I've been I've been curious about the album for a long time now. I still have not picked it up, so I figured why not give this uh, concert video a try and see if I like how she handles those old classic songs. And then also, this is another one who's uh, they, I've kind of been looking for the album for a while. I kind of wanted to get it on vinyl. I haven't found it on vinyl yet, but this is. Steve Martin and Edie Brickell. They do a live uh, live album here. I've gotten to appreciate Steve Martin as a musician, as and as you know that I'm a fan of Edie Brickell. I've been a fan of hers for a few years now. So yes, uh, it's bluegrass, which is not my favorite genre, but uh, this is I'm sure this is going to be enjoyable. I can't imagine this not being enjoyable. So yeah, and they were both what twelve ninety nine. The uh, Steve Martin Edie Brickell one was fourteen ninety nine. So. Yes, not bad prices at all on some of their stuff. So, yeah, a pretty good haul from Starship Records. Oh, and also, 
I, somehow, and, and by the time I got back to Noah and Alyssa's place, I had realized that somehow their pen, one of their pens ended up in my bag. So I don't know if that was by accident. Yes, you can see they say, we want your money. <laughs> so yes, that was a bit of an extra unexpected bonus. And also I have to give a shout out to them because they gave me an empty box that he, he thought he was going to use it for something else, but he kind of took pity on me, I guess, and gave me a record shipping box that I used to send some of my stuff home. So thank you guys at Starship. You just went the extra mile for me. I really appreciated it. And uh, hopefully, uh, if I have the time next time I go back to Tulsa, I will go back to that store as well and uh, shop there again. So yes, a very, very impressive store. Next up on our Tulsa itinerary was Josie Records. Now this is a small chain that has four stores total, including two in Texas and one in Missouri. Tulsa is not its biggest store. In fact, I was surprised that it wasn't bigger than it is. Uh, not that it's necessarily tiny. I wouldn't call it a tiny store. I just, for some reason, expected it to be bigger than it was. But this was the store where I found one of the new LPs I was looking for. I had actually placed an order for it on Amazon like a month ago, and it was supposed to have arrived while I was on vacation, and it didn't, and it was delayed until like August 27th. So I said, screw it. If I find it in the stores, I'm going to buy it. And there it was. Take the Sadness Out of Saturday Night by Bleachers, and uh, all the more better, this is the Indie Store exclusive cover edition of it. So not one that I would have gotten off of Amazon. So there you go. And uh, yeah, a couple of other, I found a five CDs along with that record. Uh, first one was a still sealed copy of Backrack and Friends, a compilation in the gold series on the Universal family of labels. And yes, uh, the little, when you see a mark on their price tags, that means that this is uh, going for half off. So I got it for two and a half bucks, still sealed, two discs, jam packed with some of the best songs ever. The Carpenters, Dionne Warwick, Dusty Springfield, Tom Jones, The Fifth Dimension, Aretha Franklin, Isaac Hayes. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, it's one of the all-time greatest hits of every genre kind of albums, and I got it for two and a half bucks, brand new. And then continuing my Chris Isaac accumulation, slow but steady, uh, his album San Francisco Nights. And then uh, going on with my Rod Stewart kick, I got volumes two and three of his Great American Songbook series. Uh, yes, as you can see, the uh, volume three was half off, and volume two was only three bucks. So yes. Amazing prices on some of the CDs at Josie. And then this last one is one of the ones that is uh, I'm the most eager to listen to. I haven't listened to any of the stuff that I bought, except for the one that uh, Noah bought me and we listened to in the car one day. But this one, Mutlu, I guess is how you pronounce the name. Never heard of this guy, but I looked him up and I guess he's a jazz artist uh, in the jazz or mu world music fields, kind of the, the maybe the crosshairs in between those. But uh, yes, I just something about this intrigued me from the moment I saw the CD. Uh, it featured, well, not only just the cover art, but also it features Daryl Hall, Amos Lee, G Love, who I am, I'm a fan of. And yes, uh, so I am very, very much looking forward to this. And with the black streak on here, you know what that means. It was one dollar. How can you go wrong? Even if the album sucks, there was I lost nothing buying this. So, but I'm. That's one of the ones I have the most strong feeling about not sucking in all the CDs that I bought. And I had to buy something out of uh, music and video and books and stuff. You guys are probably going to laugh at this. They had a Rivers Cuomo Funko. Yeah, it was right there on the display at Josie. And it's like, as soon as I saw it, I think I looked at Noah and he looked back at me and smiled and maybe rolled his eyes and I picked it up. So... And I'm adding it to my Funko collection. I'm not the hugest Weezer fan in the world, but when when they've got a we, uh, Rivers Cuomo Funko, how am I going to pass it up, honestly? Tell me, how am I going to pass it up? Now, before we get on to the last stop, I want to mention here that I would bought a few t-shirts earlier on in this trip and was on the lookout for shirts from these record stores. But on this day, on our record store crawl day, I kept striking out. Uh, Josie had t-shirts, but none in my size, although I did actually order one online the other day, so it's on its way to me. Uh, Starship didn't have a design that I wanted. Uh, they had designs referencing their store as a head shop and not as a record store, so that's the reason I did not buy a shirt from them. I mean, I, I live in the Eugene area, so and I, but I'm not a pothead, so I don't want to be wandering around with people, you know, pointing at my shirt and asking me questions that I would have absolutely no idea how to answer. So that's the reason I 
the passed up that shirt. And there was another store that had shirts, but they were really expensive. They were maybe half again as much as they were at pretty much everywhere else I went to. So yeah, kept striking out on t-shirts there. That's funny. And then we come to the last stop on our record store crawl. As the old saying goes, all good things must come to an end, right? This was a charming little store called Studio Records, and Noah had this store last on his list in case we ran out of time because it was vinyl only. They didn't sell any CDs at all. But it was only about 3 p.m., so we were doing well for time, and that is a very rare circumstance for me with record stores, okay? Believe me. Uh, and since I already knew I'd be mailing home some records, I decided to go in and look. And now the cool thing about this store is that it's in a converted house, so it reminded me a whole lot of House of Records, the store up here in the Eugene area. But this was clearly a much newer and or recently renovated house, so while it did have some charm, uh, it didn't have quite as much charm as House of Records. But uh, yes, I did find a few good things. Um, one of them was actually on my Discogs Want list. It has been for a while, and I finally found it. The album Poolside by 80s group New Shoes. The song I Can't Wait. Look that one up. It was used in an ad campaign on TV about 10 years ago, and maybe it's been that long, 10 years ago. Very, very catchy, cool song. I love that song. And then another Willie Nelson album. I've kind of been slowly accumulate, accumulating Willie Nelson albums. This is Somewhere Over the Rainbow, where he covers some more. This is one of his uh, Great American Songbook albums. Very good stuff. Uh, cannot wait to listen to it. And then I found a couple things in their $1 bin. A, uh, here we have A Fifth of Beethoven, which is the uh, 70s disco take on Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. This song was heard in um, Saturday Night Fever, the movie which I coincidentally just watched a few weeks ago, so that's probably why it got stuck in my head and I grabbed it as soon as I saw it in the, in the dollar bins. But he's got a, does a couple of other similar reworkings of classical compositions in the disco format, so uh, I'm very much eager to listen to that one, and it was only one dollar, so why not? And then this was another one of the most precious scores, I guess you'd say, that I got, even though it was a dollar record. Alley Cat by Bent Fabric. Now, Bent Fabric, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned him or not on my channel, but in 2005, I think it was, he released a an album on CD that I picked up. I didn't know who Bent Fabric was at the time, but this was an album of contemporary songs and old songs that were, you know, in his uh, songbook from way back then. But this is one of the original albums. This has the original composition composition of Alley Cat, as well as a bunch of other things on it. So yes, now I have both ends of the spectrum, a uh, contemporary reimagining of Bent Fabric and the more traditional side of his stuff, the more traditional interpretations. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to listening to this one. Uh, yeah, Bent Fabric died last year or was it sometime this year and he was like in his 90s i think so he lived uh, a long healthy life with a lot of music in his life he was a uh, dutch i believe or or danish one of the two but yeah looking forward to li listening to that one as well as to all of the other cds and L lps that i found on this trip it is i i don't know how long it's going to take for me to get through all this stuff it's going to be a while so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, several of the playlist videos I have coming up each month are going to be CD-only specials, because it's going to be take me a, quite a while to catch up with all this stuff. So yes, my big takeaway from this trip was that I foolishly underestimated the selection at the music stores in Oklahoma. Silly me, probably because I'm so used to the wide selection that's available up here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Noah was constantly teasing me throughout most of my stay because I said before flying out there that I was probably not going to buy much. And I've never been more delighted to be wrong. Let's put it that way. So anyway, yes, I think I covered all the bases. I don't think I left anything out. So hopefully that'll do it for my record store crawl and haul video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.